Hey guys, it's Sean. So I'm back with a book review today, just a solo book review, uh, Foundation by Isaac Asimov. And already the bird is being crazy. I don't know why he does this when I film videos. He never does this otherwise. Hey, don't bite you, biter. It is on my list of 24 books to read in 2024. I grouped it with like the two star, projected two star books because I am not a fan of science fiction. Um, so I really had low enthusiasm about it. It is a book on the top 1000 list along with two sequels to it. I think the first is uh, Second Foundation and the third book is Foundation and Empire, I believe. So I began reading it, really low expectations, not expecting to like it. And I actually liked this book really from the beginning. I didn't think it was overly too spacey. My first impression was that the book had basically all the tropes I knew about for like science fiction, fantasy, whatever. Because I mean, it's set in space and there's like space travel. And at one point there's like mention of some kind of like a wormhole or like, you know, interstellar space travel, like hyperspace or whatever. I think it may be a wormhole though or something like that. So the book was kind of similar to me with uh, Treasure Island by R.L. Stevenson because for that book, Treasure Island, I thought it basically had all of the tropes that would go into like pirate stories. And so this book, Foundation, I was thinking this book has like all the tropes for science fiction. So I guess uh, spoiler free-ish for the plot, <laughs> this bird always makes it crack up. Um, spoiler free as much as I can. Uh, the book is basically about this scientific expedition that goes to this other planet because basically this uh, mathematician predicts basically the fall of this galactic empire and so what he does is he takes this group of scientists to this other planet and basically what they will be is they will like chronicle all the knowledge of mankind and all the history of mankind and everything but especially like the science of mankind and preserve it so that when the empire falls which it is like mathematically proven to do uh the gap between the fall of the empire and the rise of the next like civilized government will not be as long will not be as terrible so basically it will shorten the dark ages by preserving all this knowledge so uh then like a few crises occur like every you know 20 years or so the threatens to like you know destroy this scientific expedition and so there's basically like four maybe three three I think four kind of like main crises in the book that takes place over you know like 20 years time or whatever a piece and so it basically shows like you know things are really bad and they need to find a way out of it to stop this crisis from occurring to preserve this scientific expedition look at that bird biting me what a biter that's why his name is Nibbler Okay, so now for more, like, detailed feedback. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be spoilery or not, but I'm kind of just telling all my remaining thoughts about the book. So if you really don't want to know more about the book, go ahead and skip ahead where I just tell about, like, my conclusion for the book, my rating for the book. So if you don't want to know anything else about it, skip ahead. This book is basically about the... Why did I say about? It's about. <laughs> um, maybe that's like a Canadian thing. I am close to the Canadian border. Anyway, uh, the book is basically about like a retelling of the fall of the Roman Empire, but it's set in space. Because, I mean, there's just a lot of parallels. And to me, it's very clear. This book is basically just the fall of the Roman Empire, but a space version of that. You know, you have this empire that is basically bound to fall. It's at the height of its power. Um, but then, like, you know, along the fringes of the galaxy, you know, like the borders of the Roman Empire, there's other clans that aren't, you know, thoroughly controlled. So they become more independent and they begin, like, expanding their power. So that's, like, the first uh, phase, kind of like, you know, all the barbarians moving in against Rome. 
And then the second phase kind of deals with this rise of this like quasi um, re religious scientific cult. Basically, their science kind of becomes a religion to a lot of people. So it's really a religious cult, basically, that rises up, which is, of course, like the rise of Christianity. And so it shows, you know, the power and influence of this, you know, growing religion, basically, this scientific religion. And so that grows and basically that overcomes the barbarians. Which is kind of, you know, all the, you know, barbarians and stuff converting to Christianity. What happens after that is basically this, like, merchant faction rises. Uh, because they have, like, all these resources. So they begin trading with all these different cultures and stuff. Uh, trading resources, trading knowledge, stuff like that. So that kind of shows, like, the rise of mercantilism. Or whatever um, and you know the rise basically of capitalism and free markets and all that and you know the rise of like you know pelf pelfy um, the rise of like wealthy corporations and stuff um, which you know the rise of mercantilism and then finally that is followed by like a more uh, I guess a more elite version of you know the mercantilism because it's like merchant princes so it's you know basically capitalist traders who become really really powerful and really really rich which is definitely you know the thorough rise of capitalism and at that point uh religion really begins to diminish like the influence of religion basically like this main uh protagonist for that act of the book he is not a religious person he is just into you know trading uh commerce and that guy is not religious, so it just shows, like, the basically sh decreasing influence of religion, which is kind of, you know, about, you know, where we're at today, where, you know, religion is not as big an issue, and it's just all about, like, money and dollar bills and, you know, that kind of stuff. And where the book kind of finishes off is it's written in the book somewhere there's some line about a character wondering what is going to replace this you know merchant system this real kind of capitalist system which is kind of where Asimov is saying you know right now where we're currently at in history you know you have you know real powerful capitalist governments like the US but what is going to be the next phase after that so we had the Roman Empire we had the rise of Christianity we had the rise of um, you know capitalism basically but what's going to come after that and I think Asimov was actually very much a liberal or a socialist or whatever I don't know exactly how far like if he's actually a communist or whatever but I think he was definitely more of a socialist so, you know, maybe he may have been implying that, you know, socialism is going to be the next system to take over after capitalism and after, you know, all these merchants and stuff. Maybe it's going to be socialism coming next. He doesn't say that expressly, but that's definitely something I was thinking about because also by that time I looked up, you know, Isaac Asimov because I was curious, like, exactly what he believed, especially concerning religion, because the book really read to me like it was written by an atheist, which I think he was. Um, so, yeah, so basically for the end of the book, for the whole, you know, what's going to replace this capitalist system, I was kind of thinking, oh, it's, he's probably going to want it to be socialism because, you know, I looked it up and I saw he was kind of something of a socialist. But anyway... So I thought uh, the book Foundation was going to be a real spacey book, especially by the start of it, like all this talk about like wormholes and, you know, space travel and all that stuff. I thought it was going to be just like super spacey, but it really wasn't. And it wasn't really overly sciencey either. I thought the book read more like a history book in a way, basically just a fall of the Roman Empire set in space. And I like history, and I'm pretty familiar with, ow, the fall of the Roman Empire. So I saw, like, all those kind of parallels. So I thought the book was very digestible for that reason. It didn't read overly sciencey. It wasn't overly spacey. It wasn't overly science fiction-y. I thought it was more just, like, history set in space. 
Okay, uh, as far as the rest of the book, uh, the characters themselves... Oh, gosh, this bird. I don't really think there was anything about the characters that was especially good. Like, I didn't ever real really feel like the characters were super developed. Like, I knew exactly how to picture these characters or that they had very thorough backstories or backgrounds or whatever. Um, the characters were kind of just there to fulfill a set purpose, like, you know, whether to be a mayor of this planet at the time or to be, you know, this merchant trader or whatever. That was kind of the main thing you knew about the characters, so it wasn't like they were super detailed or anything. It wasn't a super character-based plot. And the characters just weren't super remarkable. So it wasn't a story like that where, you know, it's super memorable characters. Ow, bird! Um, so I'm not going to dock the book points for that or whatever. Uh, it's just, I think, not really a focus of Asimov's writing to have, you know, super detailed characters or super detailed backstories or whatever. He was more concerned about the main plot itself. And the characters were only, like, tools to serve that end. But the characters were still passable in spite of that. And there weren't very many of them. And like I say, they weren't very super developed. So it wasn't, you know, difficult to get into each of the characters. And once they were gone, it wasn't like I really super missed them. It's kind of like they served their point. So moving on to the next ones. The next phase or whatever. I was kind of surprised about that because as I was reading I was like okay the book begins with uh, not a uh, prologue or whatever but it kind of has that kind of feel. You kind of meet two different characters in the like first few chapters so I thought one of those was definitely going to be the protagonist but then after like chapter three or four both of those characters are basically gone from the story and never really reappear again. So then it begins with this other guy, this mayor of this planet, and you meet him for something like, you know, 10 chapters or so. Uh, but then he is gone too. So it's like, oh, well, I guess he's not the main character. Then it begins with this um, merchant guy, and he's not around for too long, maybe just like five, six chapters, and then he's done. And then with the final kind of act or whatever, it's this other merchant trader, and he's like the main character for the rest of the book, but not too long. I mean, only like, you know, eight, nine chapters or something like that. So it's kind of a mystery to me who like the main character of this book is. It doesn't seem like there's actually a real main protagonist of um, the book. It's kind of, there's two main ones. There's the mayor, and then there's the merchant guy at the end, like the atheist guy. And something that was kind of interesting about him, uh, the merchant guy at the end, I think he is actually black in the story, which was very, um, I guess, unexpected for me because I wouldn't have thought, like, you know, science fiction stories would really have, like, black representation, especially at that time. Because I think Asimov wrote it sometime around, like, the early... 1900s, maybe the first quarter of the, you know, 20th century, sometime around there. Oh, bird! Um, so to have a black main character for one of the protagonists of the book was very interesting to me. One thing I thought the book definitely was lacking on was female characters. Basically, in the entire book, I think there may only be like one female character and she really doesn't do much. I mean she may be in the book for a total of like one page, maybe two pages. That is like her entire role in the story. So basically the only time she appears like one page she puts on like some kind of a dress thingy. I don't know exactly what it is but some kind of a dress or something. Uh, and then the other time like her other page is talking with this like person on this planet. I think he's kind of like a ruler of the planet. And she is basically saying something along the lines of like her father is something or other. Like basically she is the daughter of some other lord of some kind. And so she's kind of like, you know, hey, you better watch out. You know, don't push me too far. My dad's gonna, you know, do something. Uh, and that's really her only role in the book, and that's the only role of women in the book. So I was kind of curious, like, 
why is there no women in this book and why is there no like love interest even and she wasn't even a love interest really i mean she was just kind of there for a while as soon as she was introduced i was like oh here it is the love interest and she wasn't and afterwards i was reading up on isaac asimov and i think he said something about why he did not include women and i think the reason he said is because he didn't want to have love stories um, so he just thought it was an unnecessary element in stories, like you don't need the love interest. So he just didn't have it for that reason. He didn't want to have love interests, which I think is fine. But still, at the same time, I wonder, well, why didn't he have any women at, at all? Why weren't there any women scientists? Or why wasn't, you know, one of the mayors a woman? Or why wasn't one of the traders a woman? You know, so I was kind of just thinking throughout the book, there's no women in this book. So that was very interesting to me for sure. So I don't know. It's kind of curious to me that he had the black male representation with the trader, but really not much female representation. So I don't know. I'm not going to like discount the book for that, but it was definitely something I picked up on as I read. I think that's really about it. So uh, I had super low expectations for this book. I did not expect to like it. I thought I would probably only read like one or two chapters and then just be, nope, this is not for me. I don't like science fiction books. I don't like fantasy books. And I never was a, I was never tempted to DNF this book. I thought it was all just very well written. Something else about Isaac Asimov's uh, writing style, it's not overly descriptive. So he doesn't like have pages and pages of just details about anything like the characters or, you know, the setting or whatever. I mean, he's just very much kind of a minimalist style. So, I mean, he does explain, you know, he does detail some things, but not that much at all. So, I mean, the book is very much just a real easy read. And that's another thing. I was wondering if the book would be like real kind of academic and wordy and just difficult to read a lot of words a lot of like sciencey terms or a lot of spacey terms and it just really wasn't it was a real easy read is a simple read it wasn't overly much for anything it wasn't like overly spacey it wasn't overly sciencey it wasn't overly detailed it was just really plainly telling you what is going on who is who what their purpose is, what they are trying to do, what the problem is, how they are trying to overcome it. And that's really it. So it was real simple to read. And that was just Isaac Asimov's style. He just wanted to let readers know plainly what is going on. So I will definitely be reading the second book. So for this book, um, the rating, huh, I'm kind of a little bit torn on this. Basically, I cannot... There's nothing I can fault the book for that I could dock it a star, but I am kind of leery about giving it a full five stars because it's just not quite a book that I would think would be like a five star masterpiece book. But at the same time, again, there's nothing I could really see to justify lowering it a star rating. So all in all, I thought the book was very good. So I think I am going to give it five stars. With the caveat that it's not like a five-star masterpiece, perfect book, everyone in the world should read it. But it is a five-star book that just doesn't really have any flaws. And it's just all around very good and everyone probably should read it. So even if you're not a fan of science fiction like me, it's just not an overly sciencey or spacey book. So it's just really di di digestible and it's really readable. So I think you should read it. And I think, now I'm not like a big science fiction reader, but I would think this is probably one of the greatest science fiction books ever written. And it's just real easy to read, real easy to understand. Not too much, not too difficult. I read it in about a week or so, which is real short for me, because usually it takes me like, you know, five months to read a book. And and a lot of times I just DNF books. So for me to be able to finish this book, uh, not being a fan of science fiction fantasy, that just shows you, you know, it, this is awfully good. So I definitely do recommend it. I'm giving it five stars. I am going to read the next book, Second Foundation. So yeah, definitely a real good book. Everyone should read it. So I liked it.
Give everyone a kiss goodbye, Nibbler. Say goodbye. Mwah. Two, three, four.